Video masking is a powerful new tool integrated with Pinnacle Studio. You can mask objects from footage, create advanced 3D picture-in-picture -picture effects, replace objects in footage with new objects, or color correct the contents of a mask. Let's dive in. I've got two images on my timeline here. We'll use images as they're a bit easier to show you the basics first, and then we'll get to video. To add a mask to a clip, select the clip, then either go to Insert Mask Track and control click and drag on the mask track for the duration that you want the mask to last for. Alternatively, click Create Mask to automatically create a mask the same length as your clip. You can now see we have two mask tracks. Each AV track on your timeline can have multiple mask tracks, which we'll come to again shortly. But you can also delete empty mask tracks to reduce clutter. To create a mask, just ensure the yellow clip on the mask track is selected. There are two types of mask in Pinnacle Studio, shape masks and panel masks. I'll show you examples of both, but simply, a shape mask is used to cut out a portion of the video clip directly below the mask, while a panel mask is used to overlay an asset, another video or image clip, on top of the video clip directly below the mask, and to orient that asset in 3D space. I want to create a complex composite mask here, removing the background so just the rubber ring and the two subjects are shown, but I want to keep the background inside the ring. As I'm directly editing the clip, I need a shape mask. Now I can start drawing the mask. I'm going to start with the magic wand tool, which will intelligently select other pixels of similar color to wherever I click on the image. I can add to my current selection by holding control. You'll see the cursor now has a small plus sign and clicking a new location and I can adjust the tolerance so the magic wand includes colors that are further away from my selection each time I click. And if I didn't like the most recent selection, I can undo or hold shift and click to remove colors from my selection. But I'm getting there, so I'll redo the last edition. I'm done with the magic wand, so I'll select the circle shape. And as I do so, notice Pinnacle creates shape one, which is my magic wand selection, I'll use the circle to select everything inside the rubber ring. And I now have shape two on the left. I'm going to zoom in for the next part so I can make things more accurate. I'll use the pen tool to add this part of the ring to the mask and the brush tool to select the outer edge of the ring here. Moving to the bottom of the image, I can see part of a leg isn't properly selected. So I'll use the brush to draw this on as well. Now just to clean up the bits of beach that I don't want. Make sure shape one is selected, which was my magic wand shape. Then just grab the eraser tool and remove those blobs of red that I don't want. So you can see I've ended up with four shapes and they all sit within group one. There are options to change how the different shapes interact with each other, which by default is set to merge. So all shapes combine together to create the overall mask for that group. But we can make the circle in the center subtract from shape one or make shape four intersect with the shapes above it, so the mask will only be present where shape four overlaps with other shapes. These tools can make powerful mask creations. We can also add new groups entirely, and this time we'll make a text mask. So in this case, the mask contents will be any area that is inside the text. Once we have a mask set, and I'll just turn off group two at this point for simplicity. We then need to set what effect the mask has, which we do in functions. There's two categories here, mask properties and mats properties. Mask properties will affect everything inside the current mask, and mat will affect everything outside the mask. To remove the background, we want to affect the mat's opacity. So simply select this from the dropdown, and we can see the background has now disappeared. We can feather this opacity to get a blend between the mask and the mat, but we don't want that in this case. We can also keyframe both opacity and feather. So if we wanted the background to slowly fade away, we could set a keyframe for opacity at the start of the mask to 100, then jump ahead and set another keyframe to zero. You'll notice there are other ways we can affect the mat instead of just removing it. We can color correct just the area outside of the mask. Invert the colors of the mat. Replace a color. with a tolerance setting for the color we've chosen. 
zoom in or loop in, the second of which is a magnifying glass type effect, or fill the mat with a single color. If we wanted to just show the mat and not the mask, we change the mat property to none and the mask property to opacity. Or you can see the zoom or loop effect better in this instance on the mask rather than the mat. Let's go back to opacity set to zero for our mat, as this is what I want to achieve here. To see your results without the red line around the mask showing, just click to the timeline monitor at any point. You can still make adjustments to the functions while viewing the timeline monitor. If we decide we wanted the text mask instead, we can go back to the shape, deselect group one, and turn group two back on. But group one is what I want, so I'll turn it back on and delete group two. So this is looking how I want it, except I want to move the cutout to the left so that the text on the image below isn't obscured. To do this, we need to reposition both the mask and the clip. Let's move the mask first. I'll drag group one's X position to the left. About minus 18 works well. Then we just need to reflect this exact change on the clip. Go to editor and properties and put the horizontal position to minus 18. Now the mask and clip line up perfectly. So that's the basics of how to make a shape mask. Let's dive a bit deeper. We can use the same principles to hide an object in some video footage. In this project, I'm going to mask the male paddle border from the clip so that it looks like his companion is paddling on her own. And I'm going to copy a selection of open water to cover him up. First, I'll make a mask track. Then create a shape mask. I'll use the pen tool to create a mask to the right of the first subject, where the water is roughly the same color as the water directly around the paddler. Now if I go to function and remove the mat with opacity, I only have the contents of my mask displayed. So in this instance, I'm going to need a duplicate of my clip that isn't being masked at all. Just select the clip on the timeline, control and drag the clip to create a copy and put it directly below the original clip on the next track. I now need to move my mask and initial clip so that the area I've masked covers up the paddler. I'll grab the selection tool and reposition the mask. Then I need to copy the changed position to the clip itself. I'll press Ctrl and C to copy, go to the clip editor and press Ctrl and V to paste in the horizontal axis. Then just repeat this for the vertical axis. So now I've successfully hidden the paddler for the first frame of the clip but it looks pretty fake. Let's do some color correction on the interior of the mask. Just lowering the exposure two or three points looks much more realistic. And if we feather the opacity on the mat a little, this should blur the boundary, making the differences between the footage at this point less obvious. The first frame looks pretty good, so I'm nearly there. If I skip ahead, I can see that the paddler starts to be revealed as both the camera and the paddler are moving. So I need to keyframe the position of the mask so that it keeps him hidden. I'll jump back to the start of the mask. And as I only have one shape, I can either keyframe the position of this shape or the position of the group. Both will have the same effect in this case. So I'll set keyframes for X and Y on the shape. Find the first frame where there's an issue and I can reposition the mask with either the sliders or the selection tool. Then keep skipping ahead and see where the illusion breaks down. Remember, you can keep flicking between the timeline monitor and the mask monitor to help you see, but you can only drag the mask to a new position on the mask monitor. I'll keep skipping ahead 10 frames at a time with shift and X and repositioning the mask. As I'm going along, I can see I might need to either keyframe the size of the mask to increase slightly to cover everything up, or I could simply increase the feathering on the mat opacity to blur out any unwanted parts of the object. And if the color doesn't match as well as the clip progresses, I can keyframe any parameters in the color correction of the mask. So that's how to hide an object with a shape mask. Let's turn to panel masks. Panels are generally used to add something to your footage rather than take it away. In this clip, I have a woman messaging someone on her phone. I want to add a clip of her friend responding to the message. I'll create a mask track and select panel. I make my mask in the same way, but now this is going to be a container for the extra footage that I'm going to add. I'll select the rectangle tool 
and by default I can draw any type of rectangle. With this drop down, I can constrain the rectangle to a particular aspect ratio. If my extra footage was in 16.9 and I wanted the whole clip to be shown, this would be a good choice. But in this case, I want a square, so I'll select 1 to 1. Now I can only draw a perfect square. By the way, I can alter this aspect ratio after the rectangle is drawn by unlinking the shape size parameters, but a square works fine here. So now I have a container for my new footage. To add this, go to Asset and select Media. Once the asset is in place, I need to resize it to better fit my shape. And if we go to the timeline monitor, we can see that we've made a picture-in-picture -picture effect with the assets constrained to the size of the mask shape. I can keyframe any parameter of my asset separately to the panel container. For example, if my subject moves within the frame, I can adjust the framing so that she stays in shot, like this. I can choose whether the asset is linked to a group, a shape, or not linked to anything. Let's link it to the shape so that when I keyframe the shape within the panel, the asset will be affected in exactly the same way. I want the panel to appear as if it's coming out of the phone, so jump back to the panel tab and keyframe the shape position. I will come back and also keyframe size, but first, let's make the panel 3D. There are three main parameters here, orientation, the pivot point, and 3D position. Pivot point is the axis around which the panel will rotate. If we place it in the center of the panel and then adjust rotation, the rotation is centered around the center of the panel. And if we place it at the bottom right corner, rotation will center around this new point. I want the panel to flip on itself as it comes out of the phone. So for this, I will need to keyframe the pivot point to the center of the panel as the panel moves. I can then use the 3D orientation tool to orient the panel directly on the preview monitor. I'll keyframe this movement as well. Once the panel has rested at my second keyframe, I can set keyframes for 3D position, which is a way of moving the panel within 3D space rather than the flat 2D space of the panel tab position. I'll keyframe some subtle movement here to update the 3D position directly on the preview monitor and then add some more subtle orientation movement as well. Now I just need to go back to the panel and keyframe the shape size to grow from zero to the full size that I drew for the panel. Let's check the timeline monitor to see how this all looks. So you can see both shapes and panel masks have a lot of power. I've got two other use cases on my timeline here. The first is an object replacement using both a shape and a panel mask on the same clip. The original clip has this cafe open text on the A board. I use the shape mask to cover up the top half of the A board, just like in the paddleboarding clip, by duplicating the original clip and shifting the position of the mask and the original instance of the clip. Then use the panel mask to add a transparent PNG image, oriented to make it appear as if it's on the A board. And in this last example, I use the pen tool to draw a mask to color correct just the sky. You can see in the masks functions that the mask is set to color correction and there is no function assigned to the mat so it just displays as normal. Stay tuned for more tutorials dealing with other ways you can use masks to achieve the results you need for your project. Happy editing!